welcome back to episode 23 of One More Thing. I'm joined with world's best middle school pastor, Mike. Uh, uh, this past weekend, we had finished our series, um, Spiritual Rhythms, where we had spent uh, the last few weekends looking at different um, disciplines of spirituality that we can practice and learn from uh, so that we can look more like Jesus and be transformed more like him uh, in every way and every part of our everyday lives. So if you miss any of those weeks, I wanna highly encourage you, go back to the website, click on our messages tab, go find those messages or go to our YouTube page here and watch those. I wanna highly encourage you to do that. Um, they're great, especially to give you some new rhythms to practice uh, in your walk with Jesus. This past weekend, uh, Pastor Andrew, he, he preached on the discipline of celebration and talking about happiness and joy. It's kind of those aspects that follow that as well. And he preached uh, out of the text from Psalm 150, a few short verses, basically this full Psalm of praise from beginning to end. And he told us basically his bottom line being that celebration's a choice and it's a choice that's made out of response uh, to who God is and what he's done for us. And that a choice of celebration uh, can happen anywhere that we're at and in any circumstance that we're um, in because um, of who God is and because he's in control and it's all about him. So Mike, I just wanna ask a couple questions First, a more personal one being, where are you most prone to uh, celebrate God? Whether that's by yourself, maybe, or you're with others, maybe you're surrounding yourself with worship music, or maybe you're out in nature. Just kind of give me give me an example. I like going for hikes in the woods. Okay. Um, I don't think of that as much celebration. That's more just that quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, usually, I feel like the healthier version of celebration is with other people. Like I'm an extrovert, so part of that is there, that community of God, that celebration. Um, you can't play all the instruments Andrew rattled off in Psalm 150 by yourself unless mm -hmm. you have a really weird contraption. So sure. uh, the idea of being able to be in worship together, I love that. From the time I was a teenager and became a Christian till now, that's looked a lot different um, from uh, a typical, what people think of with a guitars and drums and vocalists to uh, a DJ doing electronic dance music mm -hmm. to, um, uh, ska, especially in the 90s. Okay. Love a good horn section and a rock and roll band. Mm -hmm. But that, just being together in a crowd, almost like thinking about being in a concert, the energy of being in a group together, singing a song together where no one can really hear how bad because I don't have a voice for singing. Um, and uh, But be able to celebrate like that. But then also now, um, I've got playlists of songs that are worship songs from over the years that I'll put on my car. And uh, part of it's by myself but also we'll roll the windows down so others can be invited to sing along with me as I drive by them. Me as a kid growing up, like worship services in church look different than that they do now. And especially you dive in like youth group ministries and other churches and other events, conferences and things, things look different, but there's something unique and powerful when you gather with people specifically yeah. to celebrate who we are as people of God, who God is, what he's done for us. Mm. And I also like to roll the windows down and let others, <laughs> let others join me at the stoplights. <laughs> we had been, you got a copy of this book uh, yeah. here, uh, Celebration of Discipline. Um, we kind of has been the core, uh, you know, book for these disciplines. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, what are some other practical ways that we can practice celebration? I'll start by sharing a couple of quotes that Richard has in the book. Uh, which is funny, I picked it up and realized, oh, I bought this book 20 years ago. Yeah, mine looks different. And back then it was the 20th anniversary, <laughs> okay. so like, it's, been, it's been a long time. Uh, but two things Richard said in this section on celebration, one of them was celebration saves us from taking ourselves too seriously. Hmm. Um, and then celebration gives us perspective. We can laugh at ourselves. And so the idea of being able to relax, like Andrew's talking about, with God being in control, if we trust him, then we can relax. It's not all on our shoulders. We could have some fun. and. He talked about a lot of different things. Uh, I mean, I really wish I would have talked to Noah ahead of time. And when Andrew said the loud clanging cymbals, he would have gone back there and just gone crazy, a uh, little drum solo or something yeah, in there. Yeah. Richard talks about that, whether it's singing or dancing or shouting, um, that idea is just a natural part of celebration. And if we go through and look at like all the Jewish celebrations, music was a part of that, They, you know, the dancing, even thinking about that today with their culture, that's a part of that. He talked a lot about laughter too, like mm. being able to laugh. When I think about a festival or celebrating with friends, laughter is usually a part of that, hanging out together with my family, being able to laugh at myself and laughing with others. He talked about like little kids banging on pots and pans. There's a time where that can be really annoying to you as a parent, sure, but there's a yeah. time where 
Like, what if you just sat down and started banging on pots and pans with them, like celebrating yeah. and having some fun? So depending on what age your kids are, if they're teenagers, they, they may take a video of you and make you a viral laughing at yourself kind of yeah. situation. But figure out how do you, you know, as a family, I know I think about celebrating. There's there's food and there's people and there's laughter and those things go together. And so many festivals throughout the Old Testament, there's a meal that's a part of it, that celebration together. And, you know, graduation, open houses, there's food and uh, birthday parties, there's food. And that's the idea of getting together and why not let that be a part of how we celebrate God? So mm-hmm. whether it's a, a lunch together or, uh, you know, having some music and, and there's, I know teachers that will do, um, especially cause I work with middle school kids. And so I think about their world, uh, to get some like energy out, they'll do a 30 second dance party in the classroom. Okay. Put on a dance song, 30 seconds, everybody get up, move real crazy. Nobody care what you look like. Okay, done. And, uh, no phones out. You can't record anybody. Like it's gotta be a safe environment, okay. but that kind of stuff with God, where it's, we have access to so much music and opportunity to do stuff like that, like Andrew said, anywhere and everywhere, mm-hmm. um, even using our imagination and creativity, where that's playing a game with some people together or stopping and thinking about even noticing in nature the way God has made things. And mm-hmm. sometimes the best part of a rainy day is if we happen to catch a rainbow and I'll just stop and look and marvel at how God reminds us of his promises. Or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the other day I was out and I heard, I heard this weird sound that I realized it was a redheaded woodpecker in the woods behind our house. And so just looking at how God's designed creation and just celebrating that he's a creative God. You know, I think about looking up at the sky and every day it's a different sky. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. that blows my mind to think mathematically what you have to do to have it be not identical throughout history any single day, but it's always changing. And that, that part of him is just something to, to celebrate, to enjoy together. And some people are talented and capture it photos or art, Mm -hmm. painting, that kind of stuff. But just celebrating who God is and honoring him can be such a wide variety and a lot of, uh, I think fun would be a good word to characterize a lot of it, Mm. so. Yeah, and I think what's interesting too is a lot of those things, I don't think we would even put in a category of like, as a form of worship Mm. to God or a form of anything spiritual. Like even just talking about like the hitting on the pots, like kids yesterday, my kids took a bath and they were, we were like, okay, like wash under your arms and they had soap. And I was like, I like a monkey. And so like, I'm in there and I'm like, and I'm screaming like a monk. I'm like doing like, rah, 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 and I'm like, running. <laughs> my wife did not find it funny. Uh, Cause I was being obnoxiously loud. Yeah. And, but my kids, like the joy that came out of them just to be being silly. Yeah. But like, there's not even that switch in my mind where I'm like, can that be, can this be celebration mm. as a discipline to be transformed? Yeah. And I think it can, I think if we have that mindset yeah. switch. I wanted to ask you uh, just a little bit more personal as well. Um, do you know any of anyone that really celebrates life and really celebrates uh, who God is? If someone does come to mind, what about that attracts you to them? My first response was it was really hard. I was trying to think through that and trying to think through someone. Um, and I thought about someone that, um, a man named Mike Iaconelli, who passed away several years ago, but was involved in youth ministry. And uh, he has this this book called Dangerous Wonder. And it's this adventure of childlike faith. And so he would talk a lot of, like even the back cover says, jump first, fear later, um, the thrill of thinking you could fly. His life was not anything normal that you would think of. Um, but he just challenged us to think about things in childlike ways and to celebrate God with this reckless abandon. And Mm -hmm. so that was someone that um, I got to meet him and and know him through some of his work in youth ministry. But when I think of people I'm around today, I think more of groups, like being around kids in worship, whether it's Bibleopolis or it's with kids, you know, preteens at camp, um, and they really get into the songs and the worship and having fun together, or they're in that moment of really singing out these powerful, slower, uh, more thoughtful words, you know, that we're going through. Mm -hmm. Um, There's this abandonment to like in the moment being fully present. And they're not worried about what's coming up next or what's going on. And the energy in the room of a bunch of middle schoolers at Mix and the fun they're having. And even the videos I've seen of my kids and others in high school at Move, um, there's something about having that time of worship that they are just all into celebrating God and, and who he is and what he's done for them and what that means to them going forward. And I love being around that. I can't always match the energy of the room. I'm just getting sure. too old for that, but <laughs> um, the attitude and that that sincerity of them just genuinely 
not worrying about who's looking at them, not worrying about capturing a photo of it or a video, but being in the moment and celebrating God is just um, inspiring. Uh, and then Richard talked about this in the book too, that that celebration is contagious. So that helps sure. me to celebrate God and, and to not, because as a pastor, I'm always critiquing what's going on in the service, whether sure. we're leading it here at camp or I'm going to an event. And so in that moment, it reminds me to let go of that, really trust that even God can handle that side of things and to, to focus on him and enjoying who he is and what he's done in life for us. Mm -hmm.